The Lockheed C-141 Starlifter was the backbone of the US Air Force's strategic airlift capability from the 1960s until the late 1990s. This iconic transport aircraft provided such extensive service that it even archived two-thirds of its original rated flying hour lifespan within nearly a decade. However, the USA kept the Starlifter in operational status until the 2000s with various modernizations. Today, we're investigating the C-141, the Slim Flying Mule. The C-141 Starlifter played a crucial role in logistics for numerous US operations worldwide over 30 years. It transported and fed soldiers and war machines, ferried apocalypse weapons, dropped paratroopers, carried the wounded to safe havens, and even observed the stars. The story of the C-141 dates back to the early 1960s, when the USA sought a new transport aircraft to replace the obsolete piston-engine C-118 Liftmaster, C-121 Constellation, and C-124 Globemaster IIs. The US Air Force ordered 50 C-135 Stratolifters, developed from the Boeing KC-135 Stratotanker as an interim solution. However, these aircraft featured only side-loading doors, rendering them unsuitable for carrying much of the US Army's bulky and oversized equipment. Furthermore, they could not conduct airdrop operations. The US Air Force required a new aircraft capable of executing both strategic and tactical airlift missions. It would have to be able to transport a 27,000 kg payload over a range of at least 6,500 km while performing low-altitude airdrops of supplies and dropping paratroopers. Although several companies responded to the request, including Boeing, Convair, Douglas and Fairchild, Washington chose Lockheed's Model 300, which was unusually designed to meet both military and civil airworthiness standards in 1961. Its prototype made its maiden flight on December 17, 1963. Initially, the company intended to name the aircraft Super Hercules to highlight the continuity with the previous C-130 Hercules. However, the decision was changed later and Starlifter was selected. After extensive trials, the first operational C-141 was delivered to the 44th Air Transport Squadron on April 23, 1965. The US Air Force initially ordered 132 aircraft. However, the US had just been involved in the Vietnam War, which had increased the strategic airlift requirement. Furthermore, the C-133 cargo masters, the sole modern heavy military transport in the inventory, began to experience airframe fatigue which would ultimately lead to their retirement within five years. Therefore, the US Air Force raised the order number of the Starlifter to 284. All aircraft were delivered by 1968. Nevertheless, the C-141 could not transport oversized equipment, which resulted in the development of the larger C-5 Galaxy. The semi-monocoque fuselage was constructed from 7079 aluminum alloy, enhanced by titanium overlay crack limiters. The box-type two-spar wings featured truss ribs and a skin composed of machined panels. The sweep angle along the one-fourth court line measured 25 degrees. They included ailerons and Fowler-type flaps with total areas of 15.88 and 49.15 square meters, respectively. The NACA-00 series wing profile exhibited a relative thickness of 13% at the root and 10% at the tips. The installation angle was 4.9 degrees at the root. The cabin was pressurized and air-conditioned. The cargo compartment was also pressurized and measured 3 meters wide, 2.7 meters high and 21 meters long. However, the US Air Force quickly realized that under typical conditions, it reached its volume limit before achieving the maximum weight capacity. The C-141's initial A variant could carry a maximum of 10 standard 463L master pallets, two M113 armored personnel carriers, one loaded 2.5-ton truck, one 105mm howitzer with a towing vehicle, 154 fully equipped troops, 123 paratroopers, 80 litter patients, or a complete LGM-30 Minuteman intercontinental ballistic missile in its container. A large single-piece hydraulically actuated loading ramp at the rear and the large doors integrated into the upward sweeping rear fuselage provided easy access to the C-141's cargo compartment, 
which was only 1.27 meters above the ground. The paratroopers could jump from the starlifter through the two side-facing rear doors. The TF-33 P7, the military variant of the JT-3D 8A civil turbofan engine, featured a double-leaf reverser that produced reverse thrust equivalent to 45% of the forward thrust. The takeoff and landing distances of the C-141 were approximately 2,075 and 1,145 meters respectively. The start of their crew included one pilot, one co-pilot, two flight engineers, one navigator and one loadmaster. Adding a second loadmaster was routine. In later years, navigators were only included on airdrop missions. On medivac flights, two nurses and three medical technicians joined the crew. As mentioned, the C-141A could not carry the payload to the fullest of its capabilities. Also, due to their intense operational career, these aircraft became worn out in the mid-1970s. Lockheed had already introduced the C-141B variant, featuring a stretch cargo compartment in 1973. In 1975, the US Air Force contracted for a prototype of this updated version, which made its maiden flight on March 24, 1977. Between 1977 and 1982, 270 C-141As were converted to the B standards. Throughout this five-year conversion program, the fuselages of the Starlifters were stretched by adding plug sections both forward and aft of the wings, increasing the total length by 7.11 meters. Consequently, this new version could accommodate 103 liters for the wounded, 13 standard pallets, 205 troops and 168 paratroopers. Additionally, the aircraft was equipped with a boom receptacle for in-flight refueling. In 1994, 13 C-141Bs underwent Special Operations Low Level 2 modifications. They were equipped with improved navigation systems and upgraded defensive countermeasures, gaining low-level night flying capability. 63 C-141Bs were upgraded in the 1990s to the C standards, featuring enhanced avionics and navigation systems. They also received a traffic collision avoidance system and a global positioning system. The final C-141C were delivered in 2001. After modernization, this variant could be operated by a two-person crew. In the 1960s, Lockheed worked on the 11-meter stretched civilian variant of the C-141 known as the L-300 Superstar Lifter. Only one demonstration aircraft was built and no commercial sales occurred. Subsequently, Lockheed donated the L-300 to NASA, which modified it to accommodate the Kuiper Airborne Observatory Telescope for operations at very high altitudes. The aircraft remained in service until 1995. The B variant of the C-141 Starlifter had a six-person crew. The aircraft had a length of 51.3 meters, a wingspan of 48.8 meters, and a height of 12 meters. Its wing was 300 square meters. The empty and maximum takeoff weights of the C-141 were 65.5 and 147 tons, respectively. The power plant consisted of four 90.1 kN Pratt & Whitney TF-33 P7 turbofans. Its top speed was 912 km per hour. The C-141 had a ferry range of 9,880 km without cargo. Its service ceiling was 12,500 meters, in other words, 41,000 feet. While its operational testing was ongoing, the C-141 swiftly commenced operational sorties from the US to Indochina because of the US Army's involvement in the Vietnam War. The Starlifter was one of the primary carriers of the American military's logistical burden during the conflict. After the Paris Peace Accord signed on January 27, 1973 for the withdrawal of US military forces from South Vietnam, C-141s began returning US prisoners of war home. The first Starlifter to land in Vietnam, known as the Hanoi Taxi, is currently displayed at the National Museum of US Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. The Arab surprise attack on October 6, 1973 left Israel, whose losses were severe, in an existentially precarious situation. Losing this country would significantly harm US interests in the Middle East. What's worse, Tel Aviv was contemplating the use of its nuclear arsenal to deter the Arabs, which would undoubtedly trigger an atomic Third World War. 
Washington thus decided to resupply the Israel Defense Forces to avoid catastrophe and initiated Operation Nickelgrass. Initially, Elal's airliners transported war materials, but their capacities were too low. On October 14, the US C-5 and C-141 aircraft commenced carrying the necessary supplies to Israel. Until Operation Nickelgrass concluded on November 14, Starlifters carried out 422 flight missions and transported 10,754 tons of supplies and materials. During that same period, the USSR had to conduct 935 flights to deliver approximately 15,000 tons of cargo to its Arab allies. In 1974, the C-141 began operations from New Zealand to support Operation Deep Freeze by transporting personnel and supplies to the Antarctic continent. The intense operational career spanning from Indochina to the Middle East and the South Pole naturally wore the aircraft down. By 1975, each starlifter had reached an average of 20,000 flight hours, two-thirds of its original rated lifespan. Therefore, as previously mentioned, the US Air Force overhauled and modernized nearly the entire fleet to the B standard. Washington decided to rescue hostages in Iran and initiated Operation Eagle Claw on April 24, 1980. However, many things went wrong. When this attempt failed, the C-141 was waiting on Iranian soil to evacuate the wounded and other crew members from Iran to Egypt. The Starlifter also participated in the 1983 Operation Urgent Fury in Granada to drop paratroopers, transport supplies and evacuate civilians. In the same year, the C-141s carried the Rangers who landed over the Torrijos Airport in Panama during Operation Just Cause. During Operation Desert Shield in 1990, Starlifters performed 8,536 flight missions, transporting 144,661 tons of cargo and 93,126 passengers to the Middle East. To achieve this success, all scheduled C-141 maintenance activities were postponed and the planned peacetime flight hours of the aircraft were doubled. Fortunately, the Starlifter was robust and forgiving, successfully completing its mission without any accidents. However, by 1992, the C-141 fleet had nearly reached the end of its 30,000 flight hour rated service life. Therefore, as previously mentioned, the US Air Force overhauled and modernized 63 aircraft once again and redesignated them as C-141C. In 2004, the C-141 was withdrawn from all active US Air Force units and transferred to Air Force Reserve and Air National Guards unit. The aircraft served for over 40 years with the last Starlifter retiring in 2006 and being replaced by the C-17 Globemaster III. During its service, 21 C-141s were lost in accidents, resulting in the loss of 172 lives. Nonetheless, a report published in the late 1980s indicated that its accident rate was significantly lower than that of the C-5 and C-130. The C-141 was an essential element of US overseas operations. Its strategic airlift capability even saved the world from a nuclear Armageddon. The intense demands of the US military made the Starlifter very tired. However, the robust and devoted C-141 served admirably and has become a true legend. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.